The objective for today's build was to make something elegant. Something that wouldn't go amiss at a gala or a charity event, darling. A beautiful PC that will be envied by all your friends that looks just the bee's knees, the dog's bollocks. It looks classy as heck. What kind of PC are we talking about? We're talking about a beautiful white build. Absolutely gorgeous. And we're going to be taking advantage of these EZ DIY Moonlight ARGB fans, which we've used a lot of times on the channel. We've used them in a lot of Thermaltake S100 builds, but we're going to be putting it in the Corsair 4000D airflow today in a pure white build. So let's go. We're going to be going through parts. We're going to be going through build. We're going to be going through performance. And then we're going to have a chat at the end about all the thoughts we had about the build. So, parts list, of course. Let's keep this nice and short and snappy. We've got a Ryzen 5 5600. So, not the 5600X. It's the non-X version. Um, which, actually, for most intents and purposes, is pretty much the same as a 5600X. You might have a couple of percent slower. But, you know, that £25 saving that you're getting is pretty nice. So, that's a really nice choice here today. And we're going to be pairing that with um, the RTX 3060 Ti Gigabyte Vision card. So, these Vision cards are very popular. We use them all the time. Lovely, classy white look, very clean look, not too ostentatious, not too gamery, which might make it great for somebody who wants more of a classy build. Now, we talked before about these EZ DIY Moonlight ARGB fans. So we're going to be using those in full force today. Three on the front one on the back and two on the top and we're going to be putting these all inside the Corsair 4000D airflow case which is probably one of my favorite ever cases just in terms of how classy it looks it looks very clean it's also not too overpriced it's pretty expensive um, but it's got fabulous airflow as well I think overall a uh, really well designed case from Corsair so kudos to them we're going to be putting in a white liquid cooler. This is the ID Cooling Frost Flow White. Uh, I didn't get an ARGB liquid cooler because I knew I wanted to use these EZ DIY fans. So why get a cooler with all this fancy RGB fans on it when we're just going to be replacing them anyway? But that 240ml liquid cooler is going to keep this nice and chilly. The motherboard was an excellent deal. We got a Gigabyte B550 Gaming X V2. You really need to get that V2 because it has the USB-C front panel connector on it, which the original one doesn't. We got this for around £80, which is actually a really good price for what is you know, a decent mid-range board. The memory we've got is some white Crucial Ballistics. It's two lots of eight, DDR4 3600 speed. Um, absolutely great for gaming, really on that sweet spot. You don't want anything less than 16 gigabytes. Got a one terabyte SN550, classic on the channel. A power supply, 750 watt Cooler Master, bronze. We've got a Wi-Fi adapter. We've obviously got our fans, but we've also got this Lian Li anti-sag video card system, which I think is actually one of the best ones out there because it goes straight into the motherboard. You don't have this big ugly thing hanging underneath. It's very low profile, um, and you do need some kind of anti-sag support because one of the downsides of this motherboard being so cheap is that the PCIe, the long slot doesn't have any reinforcement in it so you do get a bit of sag on the graphics card so that's why we've gone for an anti-sag system so that's the parts done how about we build it up and we'll see you for some performance testing afterwards cold, just lying here on the floor cold towels, my feet against the door how long have I been Seem pretty cavalier Little by little you take control
Elegance was our goal, and I really do think we've achieved that today. Um, I know this channel, a lot of it is just patting myself on the back, but really, the credit shouldn't go to me. I just assembled it. The credit should go to the people that actually design and make this hardware. And I think EZ DIY um, have made absolutely fantastic Moonlight fans here. I think they look absolutely gorgeous, and I think the, the Corsair case really helps elevate it. It's got great airflow, but really clean look, and they really do work together very nicely. That custom white cabling really does help the, the machine pop. It gives it that proper combed professional look. We've got lovely white components throughout the case. If you wanted to make this a real super pure white then you could get uh, something like a Gigabyte B550 Vision DP which is sort of a white based kind of motherboard but that would have increased our costs too much. It would have made it not saleable through our business so that's why we went for this B550 Gaming XV2. One of my key tips um, whenever installing RGB fans um, in the front of your case is to actually peel off the sticker that comes on the back of the fan. So most fans will have sort of a quite a nice looking side with like a logo on it or like a black sticker. But the other side will have a load of voltage information and like model numbers and stuff. And I think by law they have to have those on. But whenever you've got it facing the inside of the case, I always just peel those bad boys off because it looks so much cleaner without them on. I mean, you can see from, from this shot of the inside of the case, it looks much nicer just having it as a blank white rather than having a horrible ugly sticker with a load of um, writing on it. You can get that pure white look obviously by changing the RGB to like pure white or actually I do quite like a, a very light blue instead of white to give it a real classy look. But if you want that gamer vibe with the rainbow puke, yeah baby go ahead. I mean that's absolutely possible with these. They're fully controllable three pin RGB. No proprietary rubbish. Um, works absolutely great. But that's enough fawning over the looks of the build. The performance is also very important. So maybe let's start with a bit of benchmarking. So we're talking about Heaven Benchmark which is uh, like a standard gaming benchmark. Very very popular. It does load up the graphics card um, with a lot of work which sort of helps us find out the performance. So our FPS average with this system was 178.4 with a score of 4495. That's bang on the money for this kind of system. Um, it's exactly the same as another system we did uh, with a 5600X and a 3060Ti. Pretty much bang on the exact same value so no surprises here, great performer. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is another benchmark that we like to use because it's nice and easy to run. Um, we're running that at 1440p resolution, no DLSS on the max settings and our average FPS was 102. And now for 1440p on this RTX 3060 Ti, that's great. Um, a lot of people call 3060 Ti like a 1080p graphics card but I completely disagree. I think you can definitely get 1440p gaming out of this absolute beauty. Now esports titles seem to be all the rage at the moment so why not test a couple out. Um, we're going to start with some Apex Legends here. 1440p, everything on high for this test. Um, we've changed it up a little bit um, and we're getting well over 144 FPS. 1440p, high settings on a 3060 Ti. Now I don't know about you guys, but I'd be very, very happy with that. If we keep an eye on the temperatures in the top left there, they are chilly. So look, our CPU temperature, 50 degrees, lovely and cool. GPU temperature, under 70 degrees, which is absolutely fabulous. Great performance in Apex Legends. But how about a little bit of Fortnite? Now, you might call me a fool for testing out this kind of system in Fortnite. I mean, you could play Fortnite on a pregnancy test at this point, but a lot of people do play competitively. A lot of people really do crave those super high frame rates, and that's what we've got here today. You know, even in Tilted Towers, the most busy part of the map, we're getting around 300 FPS average. Um, don't worry too much about the 1% lows, especially at the moment with Fortnite. They've had some kind of update which has messed up with the 1% lows, but absolutely fantastic performance. Really great, even for your high refresh rate 240Hz monitors. You're going to be absolutely laughing. So that brings us on to temperature testing, um, which is obviously very important to make sure your system's going to run stably. Um, you don't need to obsess too much over temperatures. I think people get a little bit too hung up on it, um, but as long as it's within safe limits, then that's absolutely fantastic. And definitely well within safe limits today, running our 30 minute Prime 95 load. Um, our maximum temperature was 70 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely brilliant. So, you know, you're getting really good results from this liquid cooler. If you use the stock cooler on this, expect temperatures of around 95 degrees so you're getting a quite a significant drop in temperature from using a nice liquid cooler. And this liquid cooler is cheap, it only cost about 50 quid so it's definitely worth it. And you can see our equilibrium temperature which is you know it's not very scientific temperature it's like a plateau temperature similar to what you get in games 52 degrees C. 
On the video card, we're looping a benchmark for 30 minutes. We're going to see what the maximum temperature we get is. We run it at the same time as Prime 95 to get the maximum heat pushed through the system. So we're getting 74 degrees maximum GPU temperature here, um, which is absolutely fine. You're not getting any thermal throttling until you're well into the 80s. So perfect, perfect performance and very happy overall. So time to close up with a few thoughts here. Um, this is a really good one for you guys to recreate if you want a lovely pure white build but you don't want to spend like over £2,000 on it. I think this would be a really great choice. The only problem is finding the graphics card, right? Because like, you can get 3060 Ti's but getting this specific vision card might be a little bit tough but you know if you're out there looking enough you will find it and just try and get it for a good price. I think this is a really beautifully balanced system that like the Ryzen 5s and i5s go perfectly with the 3060 Ti. It's a really nice balance. If you were to recreate this build, I'm sure you'd have the time of your life. But that's enough waffling for today. If you like this video, perhaps you'd like this one about another pure white build. But if not, don't worry. Have a nice cup of tea and speak to your mum. She hasn't seen her from you in ages. She's worried about you. Anyway, like, subscribe, comment, share, do all that stuff. Ring the bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Latest.